Now this is a story about Jack. Oh, not like Jack and the Beanstalk. No, you see, this is the story of Lazy Jack. Now, he was called that because he was so lazy that all he ever wanted to do was eat and sleep. In the morning, he would get up extra early so he could go back to bed for a before breakfast nap. And after breakfast, he would go back to bed for an after breakfast nap. But then he would get up so that he could go back to bed for a before lunch nap. Do you think his mother liked him being so lazy? No, she did not. And one day she said to him, Jack, either you go out and get yourself a job or you're going to have to do your own cooking and cleaning and everything I do for you around this house. Oh, no. Jack knew how much trouble his mother went to for cooking, and he had seen her clean, and he knew that she went to the market and did other things, and he wouldn't want to do all of that. Getting a job would have to be easier, so he went out to try and find a job. Well, he went out and down the walkway from the porch and out onto the little road and across the stepping stones of a little stream and all the way to where a nearby farmer lived. And he went up to the farmer and said, Mr. Farmer, my mother told me I have to get a job. Could you hire me to work here on your farm? And the farmer said, sure, Jack. You're going to have to learn a lot and do a lot, but we'll get you started. Well, that day, he showed Jack where things were on the farm and how to feed some of the animals. And Jack worked very hard to try and help him. And at the end of the day, the farmer paid Jack a nice shiny silver dollar. Well, Jack looked at that and said, wow, that's really cool. My mother spends things like this at the market. I wonder what else you can do with it besides spending it at the market. Can you balance it on your nose? And as he started to walk home, he tried balancing the silver dollar on his nose. And that was actually kind of boring. Hmm. If there was somebody here to play with, we could play catch. There's nobody here. I could learn to juggle. And he tossed the silver dollar up in the air and caught it, and tossed the silver dollar up in the air and caught it. But he only had the one, and juggling one thing is really boring. And he thought, I know, I can toss it up higher in the air and catch it. That way I can play catch with myself. And he tossed the silver dollar way up in the air and caught it with his other hand. And way up in the air and caught it with his other hand. And he started doing tricks, fancy things like seeing how high he could catch it from, how far in the air he could catch it, and seeing if he could catch it behind his back. Well, by the time he got to the little stream and the stepping stones across, he tossed it way up in the air, spun around on one of the stepping stones and tried to catch it behind his back. And he missed. Instead of feeling the silver dollar land in his hand, he heard it go splash behind him. And he tossed it so high up in the air, it went right down into the water and right down into the mud and right out of sight. Ah, <sighs> oh well. But at least I got a job and I got paid and I can tell my mama that. So he walked all the rest of the way home and into the kitchen and his mother said, did you get a job? Yes, I spent the whole day working for the farmer. Did you get paid? Yes, I did get paid. Well, where is it? I lost it on the way home because he paid me a silver dollar and I was playing with it and it fell into the stream. Jack, the next time the farmer pays you, Put your pay in your pocket and bring it home. Oh, said Jack, I could do that. Well, 
He had worked so hard that day that he slept straight through to breakfast without even getting up in time for a before breakfast nap. And breakfast time, he ate a hearty meal and then went off to work. And that day, the farmer showed Jack how to work with the cows. It even showed Jack how to milk the cows. And at the end of the day, he paid Jack with a great big pitcher of milk. Well, Jack looked at that, and he knew he couldn't fit a pitcher in his pocket. That would be silly. So he pulled his pocket open and poured the milk in. Glug 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 drip drip drip. And he handed the pitcher back to the farmer who looked very surprised for some reason. And he started walking home. Step sploosh, step sploosh. Wait, why is one of my feet going sploosh? And he looked down and he learned that if you pour milk into your pocket, it doesn't stay there very well. And it had run down his leg and down his sock and into his shoe. And every step he took, milk was splashing out of his shoe and leaving milky footprints. Oh, that didn't work either. But he walked all the way home and when Jack walked into his mama's kitchen, leaving milky footprints, his mama said, Jack, what did you do? Well, the farmer paid me with a big pitcher of milk, and you said to put it in my pocket, and the pitcher wasn't going to fit, so I poured the milk in. Jack's mother got one of those expressions on her face that mothers get. The expression like they're about to get a headache if their child does something just a little bit wrong again. Jack, if the farmer pays you something like that, balance it on top of your head like the milkmaids do when they carry pitchers of milk. And Jack said, oh, I could do that. Well, he slept soundly again, and the next day he went back and worked at the farm, and this time the farmer showed him what you do with the milk. He showed him how to skim the cream off the top. He showed him how to churn the cream into butter. And he even showed Jack more about taking care of the chickens. Well, at the end of that day, Jack got paid with one of the things that they had made with the milk and the cream. Jack got paid a nice, big, round, fresh cheese. Well, Jack looked at that and said, okay. And he put it on top of his head and held on to it. Now, I don't know if you've ever thought about this, but the hottest place on your body is the top of your head. And if you balance a very fresh, very soft cheese on top of your head, it's going to start to melt. In fact, it started to melt into Jack's hair. It started to melt into Jack's ears. It started to melt down Jack's shirt. By the time he got home and walked into his mama's kitchen, Jack looked like a great big walking cheeseburger. Do you think his mama was happy with that? No, she was not. And she said, Jack, what did you do? Well, I got paid and it was a nice fresh cheese and I put it on top of my head like you said to do. And I came home and the cheese started to melt and, and, and I've got cheese all over me. Well, Jack's mother was not happy, but she said, Jack, if the farmer pays you like that, take care of it like you would take care of a cheese. Get a nice piece of soft cloth, wrap it around the cheese, sprinkle it with water so it will stay cool while you're carrying it, and carry it in your arms. 
Oh, said Jack, I could do that. So the next day, they spent the whole day cleaning up the barn and fixing things up where they were broken. And at the end of the day, the farmer said, Jack, your pay is going to be a little different today. This is something I'll bet your mama wants. Do you have trouble with mice getting into your kitchen and eating things? And Jack thought about it and said, yes, I suppose we do. Good, said the farmer, because my cat had kittens a couple of months ago, and they're ready to leave home, and I'm going to pay you with a kitten. Jack picked up the kitten carefully and looked around and got a piece of soft cloth and wrapped it around the kitten. And both the kitten and the farmer were kind of puzzled by this. But he got some water and sprinkled it on the kitten to keep it cool and grabbed it and began to hold it to carry it home. Well, I don't know if you've ever had a kitten, but they do not like to be wrapped up in cloth and sprinkled with water. And so the kitten began to scratch at the piece of cloth. And then it began to scratch at Jack's shirt. And then it began to scratch Jack. And at that point, he went, ow, and let go. And the kitten ran away as fast as it could so it wouldn't be wrapped up and sprinkled again. Well, when Jack got home, his shirt front was all shredded by the kitten's claws. And he needed lots of little bandages. And his mother said, Jack, what did you do this time? And he said, well, the farmer paid me with a kitten. I wrapped it up in cloth and sprinkled it with water to keep it cool and carried it home. And, and it didn't like that, and it scratched me and got away. Jack's mother got another serious look. This time it was a two-handed headache look. And she said, Jack, tomorrow... However the farmer pays you, I want you to... And she stopped and thought, I know. You're going to pull it behind you with a string. This string, and she went over and got a string from her ball of string, a nice long string, tie this to your pay tomorrow and pull it behind you till you get home. Oh, said Jack. I could do that. Well, the next day was market day. Jack and the farmer took the milk and the cream and the cheese and the eggs into the town to sell in the market. And their best customer was the town baker. Oh, this baker made the most wonderful things. And Jack was looking at the farmer and then looking at the baker and the farmer said, I'm going to make a deal with that baker for your pay today. And Jack wondered what this would be. And the farmer went over to the baker, and the baker had bought so much stuff that the farmer could afford to pay him for one of the cakes that he had made. A great big cake with juicy, sweet cream frosting and fruit on top of the cake. And he said, here, Jack, this is your pay. And Jack thought about what his mama had said. But after they got back to the farmer's farm, he took the cake and put it on the ground and tied the string around it and began pulling it home. I don't know if you've ever been paid with a cake. But if you do, do not tie it with a string and pull it behind you along the road. That just doesn't work very well. By the time Jack got home, most of the cake was in crumbs all the way along the road. And the rest of it, well, he still had some frosting on the long string. And that was what he carried in to show his mother. And she said, Jack, what did you do? I did what you told me to. I tied the string around my pay for the day, and my pay for the day was a cake with frosting and fruit on top, and it didn't follow me home very well. Oh, said Jack's mother, all right. 
tomorrow you will bring your pay home no matter what. And Jack said, yes, ma'am. And hmm, what haven't we tried? I know you're going to carry whatever it is home on your back and hold on to it carefully so that you get home with your pay. Yes, ma'am. And Jack went to bed, but he was worried and he didn't sleep very well because he knew that his mama was going to get mad at him if he didn't bring his pay home the next day. But the next day, he and the farmer worked really hard and they mended fences and fixed things. And at the end of the day, the farmer said, Jack, you're doing so well. I think you're going to be a farmer by the time you're a grown man. So I'm going to give you something to get you started. I'm going to give you this baby donkey. And Jack looked. And even a baby donkey is pretty big and pretty heavy. And he thought, well, okay. And I promised my mother I'd bring it home. So he bent over and put the donkey's front legs over his shoulders and leaned forward and put his hands up and held the donkey on his back and started walking home with the donkey on his back. Well, about now in the story, you're probably wondering, you have not heard anything about a beautiful princess in this story, have you? And there's a reason for that. She's just getting here now. You see, as Jack was walking along, carrying a donkey on his back, straining really hard. A royal carriage was approaching with the princess and her father, the king, inside and guards riding along and footmen and a driver. And, well, this wasn't just any princess. This was the saddest princess in the whole world. She hadn't laughed or smiled since she was a baby. And the king had even offered rewards for anyone who could make her laugh or smile. And no one had done it. Oh, they were riding along in hopes of something brightening her day. And she looked out the window of the carriage. And there it was. Jack walking along, carrying a baby donkey. And the princess looked and looked. And this was the funniest thing she had ever seen. She couldn't help it. She, she giggled. She laughed. And she laughed so hard she couldn't even tell her father, the king, why she was laughing. And he, he tried to get her to explain, and she just pointed out the window. She couldn't stop laughing. And her father looked out the window and he couldn't lean over far enough to see Jack, who was walking ahead of the carriage. So he did the only thing he could. Being a king, he gave a royal command. He yelled out, stop the carriage. Well, the driver stopped the carriage, and all the guards looked around, and finally he leaned out far enough and saw Jack. And he said, bring me that young man and that donkey. Well, the guards rushed off to do that, and the princess and the king climbed down out of the carriage. Well, the guards walked up to Jack and said, come with us to see the king. And Jack said, can I put down the donkey? He's getting really heavy. And the guard said, we're not sure. The king mentioned the donkey specifically, so we have to take the donkey too. But they lifted the donkey off of Jack's back, and the royal guards carried the donkey as if he were on a great big pillow. Well, that made the princess and the king laugh even more. Even the royal guardsmen began to laugh now that they thought about what they were doing. And they got back to the king, and the king said, you can put the donkey down. Young man, you have made my daughter laugh for the first time since she was a baby, and I promised a great reward to anyone who could do that. You can be rich and live at the palace with us, and maybe you can make her laugh again. 
And Jack thought to himself, does that mean I would be rich and not have to be a farmer? Yes, yes, you'd be rich. You'd be living in a palace. You wouldn't have to be a farmer. Hmm. Could my mother come and live in the palace with us too? I think she would like that. Yes, yes, your mother could come and live in the palace too. Just come and live with the palace and make my daughter happy. Well, okay, but we're going to have to explain this to her. She's in that house down the road there. And so the royal coach and the guards and Jack all went to the house and explained to Jack's mother why she and Jack were coming to live in the royal palace. They did. And as it happened, as they got to know each other, Jack and the princess really liked each other. And eventually, once they were both grown, they fell in love and got married. And so Jack got to live in the palace forever. And so Jack and Jack's mother, and the princess, and the king, and even that donkey, all lived happily ever after. And that is the story of Lazy Jack. <laughs>